Yes, I think it is. Wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. You all know who I am. I've been uh, emceeing this afternoon, but I'm actually going to work for my, for my lunch now. I am actually the co-founder of Open Banking Excellence, and uh, if everybody just, I'll just wait for a few more people to come in. Um, Open Banking Excellence is um, all around collaboration. It's an industry campfire, which I'm going to talk to you about. So if I have a speaking slot about collaboration, how could I not share it with some of our community. So this afternoon, we are going to talk to you about an amazing app, which we've heard a lot about collaboration, fintechs collaborating with banks and some of the, the challenges we have, and collaborating within the ecosystem. But what I want to talk to you about this afternoon is, is the app that we've created through collaboration and using, I have to say, some very clever APIs. So I'm going to kick off, and then I'm going to hand over to Sit Tim, from Sonin, they are the amazing app developers we've had working with us, and he's going to talk more about the human side of, of APIs, and then Sam is going to talk to you about the API economy, and I hopefully she will talk um, around Money Hub that has just won a big award. So, um, without further ado, if I take the clicker, now, you haven't seen three of us on stage uh, this afternoon, so I'm going to have to ask you for your help because um, this is like the three musketeers. Okay, so OBE, Open Banking Excellence, we affectionately call it OBE. It's, it's everybody's community. What we're doing is we're building a community for everybody, with everybody. Because at the beginning of uh, a sector that, that's growing at the rapid growth trajectory that we are, Everybody wants a feeling of belonging and to get around the campfire. And that is really what OBE is, is a forum. It's a forum for like-minded people, pioneers to get together, to have industry debate, to discuss, to have those, that constructive discussion, to learn and share their stories. And for me, very importantly, collaborate. We will not hit the forecast growth trajectory figures unless we work out the difference between compete and collaborate. So it's absolutely key. Um, and we, we, we talk about a whole range of APIs, and we've had a brilliant evening very recently, which I've got a couple of slides on, around premium APIs. And what I would encourage you to do is to go to um, Open Banking Excellence, um, either our website, so it's ob openbankingexcellence.org, um, or our LinkedIn page. Now, I'm not actually driving a ticket sale. This is a not-for-profit industry community. So what I would like is you to go there, and I'd like your feedback on the type of content we're producing and what you would like to have the debate and this discussion around. I've got some key takeaways from uh, today, particularly about SMEs, about learning. Um, the, uh, there was more questions on federated ID and the power of unlocking ID. So I'm going to take those away and we're going to be talking about them next year. So let me just tell you a little bit about Open Banking Excellence. Um, it, it, it came from very humble beginnings. Last August, uh, there was 38 fintechs in a room, and they wanted to get together, and they wanted a place, I call it a campfire, to share their stories. We are now uh, a community of international reach. There's a very big difference between global and, and international. We've got international reach of circa uh, 2,000. And uh, we're an API economy, uh, which, which Sam is going to talk about, so I'm not going to steal her thunder, but the one common denominator within our community is that everybody, everybody is an API evangelist. We see the absolute power of it. So um, I'm going to, to, to move on and to talk to you about the power of collaboration. We've heard how the banks and the fintechs need to talk more, but what I wanted to do was walk the walk with the community that we are, we are building and that is rapidly growing. Now, to be honest, like, like most good ideas, it actually came out over a drink. So one evening, we had a demo night at OBE, and, and I actually said to, to Money Hub that were there, to Sonin that were there, and to, to Striva, who have a brilliant API, think gift aid, meet, meet API. And I said, wouldn't it be great if we could all get together and to collaborate? And we have done. So without a fee, everybody that has contributed to this app for the community 
has actually worked to demonstrate collaboration. Not only have we demonstrated collaboration, it was something very close to my heart that I wanted to shine a light on the absolutely enormous talent that we have in fintech, in uh, big tech, at the regulators, um, and at uh, the banks themselves. So to get everybody to, to join a community, and I wanted an app that actually shined a light and made networking and connecting within our community a lot easier. But we, we'd all talk about open banking. I also wanted to demonstrate payment initiation, enter SAM and Money Hub, but, but we're not driving a ticket line. So what, did I, what, what, so what are we paying for? Well, I actually believe in karma. What you give out, you get back. And it's, it's, we all have our, our key values, and, and that's a very strong one for me. So we have actually aligned with some charities. So I wanted to demonstrate payment initiation so everybody could have a, a demo, a working live demonstration of open banking in their hand on their phone. But I wanted to, to do that by us all having the option of making a charity payment. And we're going to come on to that later. And I wanted to, um, you to all access a library of learning. You heard me talk about Ross and his report. That is actually already on our website. I'm just going to put it on. Well, Tatiana, who does our comms, will put it on uh, LinkedIn this evening so everybody else can access that. But it's, it's through APIs that has made all that app possible. But it's also, as Tim is going to talk to you about, it's the human element of APIs. It's the people. And I think that's what we need to talk, think about more when we're, when we're talking about um, collaboration, when we're talking about digital transformation. It's the people that actually make it happen. And that is what we have around the campfire. Now, in true OBE form, we all stick to a five-slide rule, you'll be pleased to know. Um, so I've only got a couple more to go. What I wanted to talk to you about was the collaborative karma of our app. Not only are we demonstrating payment initiation, I actually think we're actually demonstrating something more important than that. We're actually demonstrating the power of what happens when you get great people together. As I said on my first slide, when you get good people together, not just great things happen, amazing things can happen. You, you know yourself, if you get people around for dinner or, or in the workplace, if you, if you can have a conversation, then those amazing ideas will spark. And that's exactly what we've done here. I just want to talk to you about three of the charities because I, I have the airtime and I really would like when the app is out just before Christmas you to go on. It's, it's great for networking, which is one of the reasons you're all here anyway. And, and it's great for learning, which I imagine is one of the other reasons you're here today. But um, let, me, let me just talk to you about them. You've got my bank. You may or may not heard of my bank. My bank is a charity that goes into schools. It is to educate children on financial literacy so aligned to the values of our community. We've then got SAFA, which given the fact we've just had Remembrance Sunday, I'm sure you're all familiar with, as a service charity, so for ex-servicemen. A lot of those ex-servicemen leave and they, they get very quickly into debt because they have been institutionalized. The money that we raise will go towards a mentoring program for them. And the third charity is each, East of England Children's Hospice. <coughs> We're all very busy and very, very excited about building a future. These children don't have a future. So I thought it would be good to actually help make the here and now a, a little nicer for them. So that, that's the collaborative karma. Uh, we could have very easily just driven for a ticket line, but I actually thought there was more magic, and this says more about the open banking community than that. So I said we're all API evangelists. What I would love you to do is to go onto our LinkedIn page or to our website and to actually have a look at some of the amazing content that we have. And I'm going to reference two of our speakers. For those of you that were here this morning, you'll have heard from Todd, Todd Clyde at, at Token, an absolute masterclass. If you also want to uh, learn more about APIs, you want to listen to Tony from City. You really do. It's absolutely inspirational. And I've, we've just referenced a few of the other speakers that we've had, just to give you a little bit of a feel. So really what I wanted to do today 
um, was as, as, the even, as the day, the evening even, I'm getting ahead of myself, as the day draws to a close, to talk to you a little bit about more about what the people can do within a community that is driven by APIs. And I hopefully I've given you a little flavor of, of your um, community, the one that we're all building together, and, and what we have done. So not only have we built an app, we actually have walked the walk in terms of collaboration. So we've taken it from a concept that you can read about in the industry press and through hard work, and I have to say some amazing partners, we've done that. So keeping to our five slide rule, my last slide is from um, our sponsor, one of our sponsors, MasterCard, who very generously foot the bill for everybody's pizzas and all the wine and the beer. And uh, I think we're feeding FinTech, we, uh, we really are. And I think Jim from MasterCard very nicely sums up um, collaboration and how the, it's the need for us all to work together that will actually um, help with our, our growth trajectory. And I will just leave you to read that for a moment before I pass over this. As I said, a five slide rule. So allow me to hand over from, to Tim, who is one of the directors of Sonin, to talk to you about the human elements of APIs. Hi. Um, so Helen asked me to talk a little bit today um, about the OBE app that we've been building with them. Um, and as the account director at Sonin, I thought it was best I didn't try and talk about the technical side of APIs because I think you'd all find me out pretty quickly. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the human side of APIs. But for, first, a little bit about the app. Um, so as Helen said, over a glass of wine and a bit of a moan about, um, <laughs> about event apps. Um, we kind of pieced together what we think would be an, a, a good app, a good experience. And uh, at Sonin, we went and did a bit of a discovery, spoke to people about what they were looking for um, in the app, which was basically just something really quick to buy uh, to get onto the event uh, and when they attend uh, to be able to check in nice and quickly. So that's what we went and built. Um, we talk at Sonin a lot about uh, personalization and context in apps. Um, and we've built that into the, the OBE app. So um, if you've bought a ticket um, and you're open the app ahead of the event, you're probably looking to check the time or the location. So that's what you see up front. Uh, if you open the app on the day of the event, it's probably location. You're looking to where you're going. And if you open the app at the time of the event and on the, uh, and on the date of the event, you're probably after your ticket because you're checking in. So we show the ticket up front. Um, and that facilitates a nice quick movement through that check-in process. Everything we build at Sonin uh, integrates with our clients' data and their APIs, and, and the app's no different, as Helen mentioned. Um, so we integrate with all of these partners up here. Um, Equinix on their innovative hosting platform uh, and their servers. Um, Striva, as Helen said, the, um, organized the gift aid part of uh, the charity donation. And Money Hub, importantly, to take the money for the charity donation. To, to give you a bit of background about Sonin, we've been building apps for about 10 years. Um, the first app we built was on the Nokia phone. It was a Bluetooth dating app. It was miserably flawed in concept. You had to be within about a yard of someone to send them a message to say you were interested. <laughs> so uh, you were the weird guy with the phone out. But, um, the iPhone came along and kind of saved us as a business model, um, and, and we've been building apps ever since. Um, back then, uh, it was quite a different experience. I mean, we were still trying to attempt to use people's APIs, but it really was quite different. I mean, there was no industry standards, uh, rarely any documentation. Uh, performance was really considered. Uh, it was what, pretty much the wild west of, of APIs. We were just getting thrown XML in lovely forms like SOAP and, and having to get on with it. Um, and there was no access to developers, which is what I'm kind of coming on to. Um, we even had one example where a client's live API would go down at a similar time every day, and we didn't know why and didn't have access to ask why. And we realized that uh, he was running it on his local machine. And when he went home of an evening, he turned it off, and the service went with him, which is good. So we've developed a, a different way of working at Sodin with our partners, with our clients and, and their APIs. So we've kind of turned the um, interaction model on its head a bit um, because we believe making APIs uh, work isn't just about the tech, it's about humans communicating. I think good APIs are 
people working with people. Um, so like I said, the, I mean, the standard model is VOTI. This is kind of a, a uh, account management standard model, but um, sales talking to buyers and routing everything back, back and forth. And so we've tried to, to turn that around so that everybody talks to their opposite number on the client side. So most importantly, devs are talking to devs. Um, obviously, shared goals is key. Um, but if you set that up so that they can ask questions of each other, then uh, we found it leads to a better experience, and a quicker project. Um, a really good example um, is, is our work with MoneyHub on the OBE app. Um, so they were very kind. They sent API documentation. They gave us access to their GitHub account with sample code. We had diagrams of their payment flow. Uh, even let us know when scheduled maintenance was happening, which, which never happens. Um, but, but probably most importantly, they, we set up a Slack channel for our devs, their devs, to start talking straight away. Uh, it allowed us to hit our timelines. Um, they asked the questions they needed, got the answers nice and quick. And it's a really good example of that uh, diamond kind of account model working well. So in summary to my bit, before I pass you over to Sam, um, like I said, I think we believe that... Um, APIs aren't just about uh, tech. Um, it's about humans communicating, and good APIs are, are about people working with people. That's my bit done. I'm going to pass you over to Sam, CEO of MoneyHub. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> All right, thanks, Tim. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so I'm here to finish up, uh, and I think I'm going to start by using Aristotle, which I hope after two happy days you'll kind of uh, have got the gist that I think that really we can achieve great things with APIs. Uh, for, for worlds outside of tech, it's a, a great example is British Cycling. So you look at how they took apart all the elements of what they needed to do to outperform, achieve outstanding results, uh, right down to, I don't know if you know, but you know they had to take their pillows with them everywhere they went, so you got a better night's sleep, uh, had to wash your hands everywhere you went to minimize any illness, and so therefore, days you couldn't train. Uh, so it took it right down to a, to a level of detail that really hadn't been done before. And of course, what happens when you combine all of that is really this, this idea that you can achieve great things. And going back to what uh, you know, we, we, we've achieved really with the OBE um, app. So, so but, but more than that, in the tech world, it's really about credentializing. It's about credentials, it's about um, synergy, process, automation. That's kind of our world. Um, it seems very dull, but it, but it's incredible what you can achieve if you think about where we've come from in the last 20 years in terms of tech, not just, really not just the APIs. So I really wanted to kind of highlight the fact that, um, you know, if we can achieve what British Cycling achieved in financial services, you know, we will, we will be doing well. Um, coming a little bit closer to home, so a little bit in terms of Money Hub and, and the power of what I think. So, so um, I think of aggregation uh, in terms of like um, mining the oil. So it's, it's great. So you, you can bring everything together with APIs. And, and to be fair, still with some of the things I think Swift was mentioned before, you know, secure FTP, there's still a lot of kind of legacy around. But actually, if you bring it all together, that is, that is one thing. But then being able to actually categorize and use that, that's really the next step on, isn't it? And some of our you know, partners in here that um, were mentioned before have, have, have done great things. You know, Google and people like that are really very good at it. But actually, um, you know, one of the examples I wanted to use uh, in order to explain the, the way that we categorize data is, is Waze. And I, I don't know how many of you use Waze. So we've got a few, handful. And, and, and really what that's all about, again, is the collaboration part. So, so you know, even in our categorization engine at Money Hub, what we're using is the 80-20 rule along with the community. So 20% get very annoyed about getting things right, and then 80% of us don't care and just benefit and go for the ride on those 20% that do a bit more of that hard work. To give you an example, if you go to the Duck and Waffle in, in Devon, you know, most categorization engines are going to say that that is miscellaneous because it's got no idea. It's got no hope of knowing what that is. And it's, you know, it's not a main merchant, it's not a, you know, it's an off the, off the beaten pub in Cornwall. But uh, you'll get someone who thinks that's very annoying for it to be miscellaneous, so they correct it, it's not it's eating out. And then actually the machine learning algorithm thinks, okay, someone thinks that's eating out, I might try that next time someone goes to the duck and waffle. I don't correct it, because I don't care, it's right, whether it's miscellaneous or there, I'm like, I'm okay with that. And actually, you know, in time, what happens is you get better categorization. 
Why is that important? Because actually there's a long tail in most countries of transactions that aren't dealt with the main merchant codes. So you really do need to address that if you want to use this type of data for affordability, for lending, uh, the, the kind of the world that we're heading into, this type of thing is important. But once again, it's really the power of it is going to be through the community and collaboration. We obviously then personalize, and I think this is back to Tim's point, which is like, I don't really want you to tell me stuff for people like me, because there isn't anyone on earth like me. And, and that's gonna be the same for everyone in this room. We are all unique. What I really want you to tell me is stuff that is actually relevant to me. And I'd like you to get it kind of right on the timing. And I, and I kind of explain this by saying, you know, I, I bought a bed, a new bed last year. And, you know, then I, I, I had beds following me around everywhere, you know, kind of like, you know, everyone wanted to sell me beds. And I was thinking, sitting there thinking to myself, why don't they try and sell me sheets? It's like, you know, I, you know I, I, I think I would have bought sheets. I really do, but I didn't buy another bed. So, you know, I really do want them personalized. I think I can't be alone, you know, because we're busy people. So I, can't, I don't think I'm alone on this journey. And I think personalization is going to be key. And then actually, I want to take it a step further. So if someone had managed to serve me up those sheets and said, you know, John Lewis, 50% off, they've got a great deal, I'd have liked to have been able to buy them then and there. So I'd have liked to have actioned that. And that's why I think the power of the uh, open banking with payments, so being able to initiate a payment, is really powerful for non-banks. So going back to what we've done in the app, being able to initiate that payment for those charities, it's really powerful. Uh, the next thing I want to do is just bring that all together, really, to say that what that means for all of this is great things. So the API economy, for, for me, means effortless money management. You know, that is where we're heading. And, and I think, you know, if you, you think about human beings, so going back to Tim's point about humans and people, we actually uh, really are only interested if it saves us time, money, or it's fun. And, and that really comes down to uh, three key things. And if you can get those right, people kind of, you know, really, really gravitate to that type of area. So I think as financial services, if we can kind of harness the power of the API economy and the collaboration, the community that we've got, which we know we have, uh, we're going to achieve great things. But there is a but. So there is always a but. So we move at pace, and it's, it's great for us, but there is, you know, there is this group that doesn't find what we do very accessible. So we've got groups which uh, don't find handheld devices easy. Uh, we've got groups where, you know, I'll put my mum in there. She's, she's not interested in the tech. Like, you can try. I've managed to get her on WhatsApp, so she can kind of WhatsApp. That's about it. You know, she's got a very good smartphone that WhatsApps. She doesn't even answer it as a phone. You know, so you know. so you, you, we are going to have um, audiences that we're not servicing very easily. Um, but I just wanted to show you this video because actually the API economy comes to power yet again. Is that my CTO that you can't hear? Never to be beaten by technology. Room for a tech is I can hear thunder behind. I think there's somebody running. I can't even stop it. No. So while we pause and we re go back on this, I will do the bit that I was going to do at the end in terms of um, accessibility and, my, and one of my other concerns. So while I have the stage, and, and obviously I'm a girl, I just wanted to mention that today, I don't know if you know, is Gender Pay Gap Day. And the reason it's Gender Pay Gap Day is because as of this day, all the girls in this room, we stop earning the same as men until Christmas. So that's the gap. It's 17% of average uh, pay. So, uh, average pay gap. So I wanted to mention it because uh, the main reason for that is probably in, 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 all, uh, in all aspects is to do with children and the care for those children. I just wanted to raise the profile of the fact that I think the the kind of cost of having children for women is, to me, financially too high. So I, I want all of you to take away, you know, with you today anything that you can do in your businesses and in the way you go about what you do in terms of making it easier to look after children, easier to have children and work full time, because I think that's one of the biggest ways we'll address the gender pay gap. And if we could get beyond November, what is it, November? The 12th, is it today? 14th. 14th. If we can get beyond the you know, November 14th next year, you know, that would be a good, good result. So I'll just go back.
in the evening. Yes. I'm a millennial, so I'm not going to just look out of the window, but I'm going to ask my assistant. Alexa, what's the weather in London this evening? Right now in London, United Kingdom, it's five degrees with cloudy skies. Today's forecast has dreary weather with a high of five degrees and a low of zero degrees. Dreary, yeah. You probably didn't need to ask. But uh, let's ask another question. Alexa, ask MoneyHub how much is in my current account. Your balance is £3,201. OK, could probably splash out tonight, but I've still got some bills to go out. My mortgage still needs to go out. I, I can't really drain my account, so let's, let's try again. Alexa, ask MoneyHub how much I have left in my entertainment budget. Your remaining budget for entertainment is £16.12. You have spent £203 this month. Yeah, I think I better take a little look at my finances. So the reason I bring that to you is because uh, we get quite a lot of comments about, oh, no one's, no one, especially from my world of pensions that I've kind of, my history, no one's going to talk about finances like that, right? This is ridiculous. But I wanted to bring it up because actually it might be ridiculous for us because, you know, we can do this in a different way. But I wanted to, to bring it up again because I think there is an answer here with some of the accessibility issues that we will face. And uh, this was two years ago at Finnovate. So, you know, it just goes to show that what we do in our world sometimes takes time to develop and, and, and be taken up by the wider world. But I really do think, again, the API economy is going to be very, very um, powerful, you know, with accessibility and addressing some of those issues. So really, I just wanted to, to, um, to finish up by saying that um, it's all about, uh, you know, collaboration, working together, and actually really embracing not just open banking, but I would go a step further in saying that we've got to look a lot further than that to open finance. And once we look at open finance, we then achieve the holistic result of helping people from what I call cradle to grave with their money. And, and, and as everyone in this room will know, that journey isn't a nice up and down, which is what you, know, you see a lot of the time with the accumulation, decumulation. You know, things happen along the way, and it, you know, it kind of you know, just puts you, you know, out here to the left or off to the right. And, and actually, financial services really needs to support that entire journey much better than it does today. So yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> so, so with my other hat on, I am particularly proud of, um, of what we've achieved at Open Banking Excellence, OBE, um, but also particularly a, a proud of what all the partners have done to, to collaborate on the app. The, the title of this session was Cracking the Collaboration Code, and hopefully I've shown that we can do that. What I would like to say that um, Sam was also invited to talk for at Isabel's um, Women in APIs, so a big shout out to API Days for actually doing that, but couldn't make it, hence her doing a little, sneaking in a little pitch about the gender balance there. So that was cleverly done, thank you. So before we hand over, um, has anybody got any questions? Well, we, um, we can finish on time then. I would like you to give a huge, and I mean huge, appreciation to Tim from Sonin and Money Hub, Sam from Money Hub.